sex practice that spreads such as masturbation, which was viewed at the time as a precursor for mental illness later in life. There were others, though, that took less drastic approaches, suggesting one could instead treat this intestinal intervention by changing the intestinal flora. So over a century ago, there were reports of successfully treating psychiatric illnesses like depression with a dietary regimen that included probiotics. Doctors perceived a connection between depression and feces deficient in quantity and moisture and very offensive in odor. So they gave people probiotics, and not only did people feel better psychologically, but their feces increased in quantity, softer, more regular consistency, and the offensive smell diminishes. Concurrent with the probiotics, however, all patients were started on a vegetarian diet, so it may not have been probiotics at all. This field of inquiry remained dormant for about a hundred years, but a new discipline has recently emerged known as enteric intestinal neuroscience. Our enteric nervous system, the collection of nerves in our gut, has been referred to as our second brain, given its size, complexity, and similarity. We've got so many nerves in our gut that uh, as many as in our spinal cord. And it kind of makes sense with the size and complexity of our gut brain is not surprising when considering the challenges posed by the interface with our largest body surface. We have a hundred times more contact with the outside world through our gut than through our skin. We also have to deal with our hundred trillion little friends down there. It takes a lot of processing power. Now, anyone who's got butterflies in their stomach knows that our mental state can affect our gut. In fact, everyday stressors can affect the integrity of our gut flora. This innovative study looked at feces scraped from used toilet paper in undergrad during exam week. This is how many bacteria they had in their feces before the exam. But look what, look what happens on exam day. In effect, lasted through the whole week. So our mental state can affect our gut. But can our gut affect our mental state? We didn't know until recently. For example, many suffering from chronic fatigue syndrome complain of gut dysfunction. So researchers tried giving people probiotics to see if their mental and emotional state could be improved. And indeed, it appeared to help. What about healthy people, though? This is the study that really rocked the scientific of the psychotropic properties of probiotics. One month of probiotics was found to significantly decrease symptoms of anxiety, depression, anger, and hostility. How is that possible? Well, a variety of mechanisms has been proposed for how intestinal bacteria may be communicating with our brain. Until that study was published, though, the idea that probiotic bacteria administered to the intestine could influence our brain Thank <laughs> you.